about what is expected out of the <laughs> um, Jackson State defense. I'm not saying they're going to perform this way. This is the closest I could find to what Mr. Thurman would be running. Remember, three seconds is the rule. If you can get disruption within three seconds, you can change the offensive game plan. Let's see how the Jets for 2011 to 2012 handled that. Wow. Damn. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to look back at this play real quick. Hold on a second. We're going to see the formation. We're going to put it in slow motion so everybody can find out what's going on. All right. Let's put it in half speed. I know it's bad quality. Get over it. So, as you can see, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, possibly seven. Yeah, the secondary has to step up. They brought seven. <sighs> and they had to do a mass protection. One, two, three, four. Maybe that's five right there. So they have one, two, three. Four, that's nine, and two more out there. Doesn't hold up, does it? Bam. Any overthrown pass must be intercepted. And that's not just because, well, it's Revis out there. I'm not saying Warren or Nugget is Terrell Revis, but he's being asked to play that position. Once again, three seconds. One, two. See, trying to jump out there. Overthrown passes will be picked off every time. Now, once again, three seconds. It has to be out. Get pressure. Make the move to pocket. People who are not athletically inclined will not work good against this kind of defense. I don't have a lot of hate for saying this, but this defense is basically meant to destroy a kill glass. Um, the people you see who run this kind of defense, who win against this kind of defense, are your mobile quarterbacks. People who can move the pocket. Because if you have a stationary quarterback, it's a target. It's basically a target, man. Every time. Um, with the amount of people... <laughs> First, first stars, uh, five stars or four stars that Jackson is recruiting and transferring, you would think this is what they're trying to trying to do. They're trying to recreate the last time the Jets were good, basically. Um, <laughs> now, I mean, come on, man. The Jets looked like, like the damn Super Bowl champs back then. They just couldn't get the offense correct but this is what they're, they're trying to run they're running basically a long blitz scheme amped up and juiced up to uh, 2021 um, I think they have the big bodies up front to stop the run even though most teams in the SWAC don't really run besides Southern and maybe Alcorn um, <laughs> for us passing their secondary they have every position filled. I mean, they basically have a a defense or a roster with as much talent as some FBS teams. Now I want to show you something. This is the 2021 football team rankings for 24 uh, seven sports. Okay, of course you have your Bama, your Ohio State, blah blah blah. Who cares about them? Let's get to the meat of the, meat of the subject here. With the last <laughs> signing, we have Jackson State at number 54. They're ahead of my beloved Kansas State. That's where I'm from. Don't hate. They're above them. Syracuse, Duke, who sent all those players to the, um, the NFL in the draft last year, you know, backup players from Duke. They're ahead of UCF. They're ahead of Iowa State, Washington State, TCU, which is a big deal in Texas. San Diego State, Kansas, okay, 
Colorado, USF, which is in Florida, of course, the Florida boys and them, I predict to beat them. But um, Wake Forest, Boise State, <laughs> they're ahead of all of these teams. BYU, which had an amazing year, had the what, number two, I believe, pick in the draft. They're way ahead of them. Illinois, Texas, basically, they have a team, recruitment wise, that's ranked ahead of some of the mid tier Power Five schools. Now, they're not ahead of the top tier Power Fives. But the Techs, the Illinois, the, you know, Purdue's, Arizona's of the world, they're ranked way ahead of them. And you look at who they have. I mean, yeah, we all know about Shador. We know Nugget and Dijon, Jimmy Warren. But there are other players here who came early, and I think people forgot about where the people that came in behind them. So you have Javante Gardner, who... Be honest, dude. The guy is six foot five, two ninety. It was funny with his recruitment. He went from a four star before he signed, so all of a sudden he's a three star when he signed at Jackson State. They lowered his ranking <laughs> uh, when, when they signed him, but he's been there for almost. He's been in, in the program. He's ready. And then, of course, you also have you no. Know, Mr. Ross from Vegas over here, the defensive lineman. Charles Armstrong. These are kids who signed early. Herman Smith, people who are in the program. And, of course, you have Mr. Davis to sign, Mr. Evans signed, Javante Rucker, Mr. Hobson, Mr. Brown, another Mr. Brown, the Brown family. <laughs> They've all, they've all signed. Uh, you have people like J.D. Martin, who's going to bring in the explosive running back out of the backfield. Jamie White as well. <sighs> we didn't get to the transfers yet. <laughs> 17 transfers, right? So he has 18 signees on freshmen or Ju- Juco. And then you have 17 transfers. With people he seem to forget about. Peyton Pickett was a problem at Liberty. You heard me. Niles Gaddy, he needs development, but he will be able to play. Do not underestimate Keith Corbin. Of course, Grayson is going to be that backup, but he's going to learn if, if Stewart does step out. <sighs> yeah. Um, Shane Hooks is, is a problem. Mr. Miller, both of them. Uh, one from Auburn and the one from Missouri. We saw Aubrey in, in the spring. Aubrey has been that kid, that dude. A linebacker, their linebackers rival anything you're going to find on the lower to mid Power 5 teams. You miss McClain. I, I, <laughs> Dude, really? <laughs> this is like almost getting ridiculous. Oh, amount, amount of talent they have coming in to Jackson State right now. Please like, comment, and subscribe, <laughs> share, do everything we can to get this algorithm going up. See you later.